So, you know, there's a common theme in Christianity, right? And uh, usually you hear people say that you need to be saved. And uh, what from? What, wh why do we need to be saved and what from? Um, and how do we get saved, right? So whether or not you believe what is in the Holy Bible, we can come to an agreement that us as humans are evil. We fight constant wars to control land. Greed and envy run rampant. And the lust of humankind as of right now in our society seems to be uncontrollable. What was once good turned bad due to humans' desires to step away from God and, you know, do what we wanted to do. But that's not how it was supposed to be. From the beginning, humankind has been sinful due to the first act of rebellion to God and that of Adam and Eve. Stick with me. From the first sin entering in us, we have all been contaminated after the first rebels, which in turn turned us all into sinners. The best way to know what sin is is that of the Ten Commandments. Um... Basically, it's just going against God's nature or law. So since God has claimed to be love, 1 John 4, 8, if we hate each other, that would be considered a sin or as sin, right? Once we sin one time, even if we were perfect when we were born, but we weren't due to inherited sin because of Adam and Eve, we would all be guilty of breaking God's law. Every single one of us, me, you, uh, the, the most perfect person other than Jesus, which no one else would be perfect, right? So we would all be guilty of breaking God's law. Only one person was perfect, which was Jesus. So there are two testaments in the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament has multiple covenants that God issues with us in a form of a partnership with God and man. The first covenant was that of God and Noah, where God promised to never flood the earth the way he did again in the time of Noah. This catastrophic flood covered the, the entire earth, right? To show this covenant, God gave us rainbows as a sign of the covenant from God. The next covenant God made was with that of Abraham. This covenant stated that God would give Abraham numerous offspring, land, and bring a universal blessing to him, to humanity, through his family. Abraham had to follow God and teach his offspring the way of God and this direct relationship between them. This also came a circumcision to every generation under Abraham to set God's people apart from the rest of the world since this was God's chosen people. The third covenant that was made was with Israel. God rescued Israel from slavery under the Egyptian rulers. The covenant was that Israel would be a holy nation set apart from the rest of the world. God would dwell in Israel and bless his people. This was a conditional covenant of grace stating that they had to obey all of God's laws that were given to them at Mount Sinai. This was when Moses got the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. God promised to bring his uh, God promised to bring blessings to his people if they obeyed his commands and if they disobeyed, they would have curses brought upon them. The last covenant was that of King David. God promised to make King David's name great and that he would have a royal kingdom. Also that he would have a descendant that would eventually build a house for the Lord and his throne and this kingdom would last forever. However, we see man break their end of the covenant every time and everyone from the high priest to the lowest of the nation, corruption filled Israel and us. This is when the new covenant comes in. All right. Throughout the old covenant, there are prophets prophesying about this new king to come, this Messiah, the one from David's bloodline. The Old Testament was setting up a redemptive story for humankind because we couldn't keep our end of the bargain. This is where Jesus comes into play. This guy named Jesus who was a man but claimed to be God himself to fulfill all the covenants that humans broke. God came down, put on flesh to fulfill all that was required of us and fulfilled everything on our behalf so we could have everlasting life. The spotless lamb died on the cross, rose three days later, defeating death. Oh, death, where is your sting? Jesus dying on the cross and rising again made it possible for us to enter into heaven and be saved from the grips of hell. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement. Through faith in his blood, he did this to demonstrate his justice. Because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed before unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. The reason Jesus had to be a sacrifice for us is that our sin couldn't go unpunished. So Jesus took our place so we could be pardoned for our crimes against God. Hell and heaven are very real places. The one called Jesus, the Son of God, talks about these places and died on our behalf so we can live eternally with him in heaven and instead, or so we can live with him in heaven instead of being separated from him in, in hell forever. Now that we understand that we are pardoned because of grace and not by works, we can put our trust in Jesus Christ and our faith in Jesus Christ. It is impossible, impossible to get to heaven 
by your works. It's impossible. Not the, the, the best thing you can do, you will never get to heaven. That's not the payment. That The payment was Jesus Christ dying and raising. That was the payment. We can't pay our way to heaven. We have to have Jesus and that's it. That There's no other way. Okay. If you don't believe me that Jesus is the only way and that he stated he is the only way, Jesus answered in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And basically, Jesus is saying, well, you've seen God, right? And that is because Jesus walked the earth, okay? He's clearly stating that he is the only way. There's no other way. And it's through him that you and the Father, God, which Jesus has got to. We'll get into that another time about the Trinity. But, um, yeah, he's the only way. The New Testament is called the Gospel. And the Gospel means good news in Greek. And how good that news truly is. To be saved from such a horrible, treacherous place like hell. But not even only that. When you are still alive, he makes you a new creation, giving you a new heart. So even the old desires that you once had that were of death, he broke. God brings you peace while you are still alive. He calms the anxiety and the tormenting feelings you have in your heart and mind. He takes away the stress that is pushing you to the edge. He takes away the condemnation, the guilt, the shame, the hurt. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. And when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he heals you and is with you even when you are still here on this earth. It's not just you believe in Jesus to get to heaven. It's to live as a Christian, to pick up your cross, to pick up your cross daily. You know what I mean? To to live like a Christian, to live like how Jesus was living. He also gives you a calling. Honestly, when you accept God, it's distinctly different from everything else you could do. So now you know that all of us need to be saved. And what are we saved from? So how is someone saved? Well, the Bible is really clear on that. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 9-13. What's next when you are saved? Well, when Jesus walked this earth, he came with a message of rich love, grace, mercy, and compassion. But he also had stern words for people who listened to him. He wasn't just all lollipops and sweet tarts, right? He commanded repent or perish. Now, there were some present at the time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifice. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Are those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. So what is repentance? Well, it's turning away or simply changing from your past sinful ways, whatever that may be. So what Jesus is saying, you have to change. You can't live the same way as you currently are, right? Come as you are, but do not stay as you are. <clears throat> uh, there's another part in the Bible we'll maybe talk about in the future, but talks about like a dog going back to his own vomit. You know, you've probably seen it. You know, when you get a, a dog that throws up, he he licks their, well, their vomit up. You know what I mean? And and that's like the same way as us sinners. Like we get set free. God breaks the chains. God God breaks the strongholds. We, we get strong in faith. And even if you're not a Christian, you know, so, but I'm just saying as like a Christian, you, you get strong in faith and you have these things broken and you're like a dog that goes back to your vomit. Instead of changing and choosing Jesus, like choosing to live the way he wants you to pick up his pick up your cross and and live the way he lives right the best you possibly can instead we we follow the ways of the world right and uh that's that's a problem so uh you, you got to repent it's it's a pretty big pretty big notion when jesus came that it's important to change not just stay the same for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God bless.